In this video, I'll show you how to set up Git on the MSBA server. So the process is very similar to setting up Git and connecting Git to GitLab from your laptop. Uh, so we'll be able to go a little bit quicker in this video than in the prior one. So first of all, uh, you may recall that we set up in the prior video a, an initial repo. We created that on the GitLab server and then cloned it down to our laptop, made some changes and pushed those back up to the GitLab server. Okay. So here is my local machine, I see localhost, and I've made my changes, and those changes are reflected on the GitLab server, which is a remote server. All right. Now I've also logged in to the MSBA server, um, and there's a number of things that I can do here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up our studio. And I'm going to basically do the same process as I would have if I were setting this up on the laptop for the first time. So that means, I'm a bit bigger, I'm going to choose add-ins, git gadget, and introduce myself. So it's the same information, rsm vnice, rsm vnice at ucsd.edu. There we go. I want to use not the commercial GitLab server, but the rsm gitlab.ucsd.edu server. I need a token. Now what I could do is I could create a new token, but I could also reuse the token that I created for my laptop. I can reuse that. So where is that? Well, it's not that hard to find, but let me give you a little bit of a shortcut to get to it relatively easy from our studio. Use this. It's a very convenient package with lots of different options. Edit. And then this is the one I want. Edit underscore r underscore environ. Okay. If I enter, now it's opened up the r environment file and it shows the information that we had provided previously. So here's my username, uh, the email address I'm using, the GitLab server, and here is the GitLab token. So again, I, I could create a new one, but here I'm just going to reuse the one that I created for my laptop. Let's go back to our Studio server and let's paste that in all right so i'm again going to use a student what is the base directory going to be well it's going to be the same setup the same structure on this machine as it was on my laptop so i'm going to use tilde again at the top left of your keyboard forward slash git and then i'm going to click introduce all right now you know that as I make a change, I wanna make sure that our studio is picking up the changes in the environment variables that we created by doing this introduction. So I'm going to click on restart and I'm going to restart the R session, right? That way the process gets started anew and it pick ups, picks up the changes that we wanted. Let's click on that. It says reconnect, yep, that's fine. And there we go. And again, I'm gonna clean up with control L. So let's start. Get gadget again. And now we see the information. Again, you can see we're running on a different machine now. We're not running on my local machine. We're running on the remote RStudio server with this URL. And so we see that the information that I provided before I press the introduce button is maintained and is known. So that's great. And so the next thing I need is to set up this SSH key, right? So currently there's none. So let's press the SSH key button to create one. As soon as I do that, we are being taken to the correct server where we can put the information about the key. And you can see there's already one there, which is the one that I created for my laptop, right? Okay, so going back to our studio server, when I clicked on the SSH key, provided this long piece of information. So I'm gonna copy the whole thing, right? Remember, we need every, every little piece. Copy that into the clipboard and paste that into this window. Again, you could use your email address, but I prefer to do the following, which is here, uh, the MSBA server, right? So now I know which key goes with which machine. So let's add key. All right. And now let's check on which keys we have. Here we go. There's an MSBA key and there's a key for my laptop. All right. Now what I'm going to do one more time is I'm going to just stop Git Gadget 
and I'm going to restart the R session again just to make sure it picks up all the changes in the environment. It says reconnect, fine, let's do that. Again, I'm going to press Control L just to clean up a little bit. So now we are trying to make a connection between our Studio server and the GitLab server. So the first time we're going to clone a repo, we're going to again do that through the terminal. Right? You only have to do that the first time. After that, we can use Git Gadget if we want. So what is the repo? Well, the repo is the one that we already created from my laptop. Okay? So I'm going to go to test one, the home page of that. I'm going to clone that repo. Here's this git at and so on. Copy that. Go back to our Studio server. Again, double check that you're on the server and not on your local machine. Right? Both of those are running in your browser. You go to the terminal. Okay. And let's see what we have. All right. So let's go to the Git directory. What's in the Git directory? Nothing here. In fact, I don't have to install Docker and all that because that's already set up on the server for us. So there's just a clean Git directory. So how do I get to the repo from the terminal? Git clone and then paste the information about where the repo is located. Press enter. And again, it's saying adding information about this host so that it knows that there's a, there's a, a good secure connection being established between the GitLab server and the uh, MSPA server. So that all looks good. Let's see what happened. Great, it was added. Now again, I want to establish this the very first time just to make sure that there's a secure connection. That's all worked perfectly. So what I'm actually going to do again, I'm just going to remove this directory that I just created because I want to see if it now also works through Git Gadget. All right, so test one, test one. There we go. Let's check. Clear. LS. Okay, nothing left. All right, great. So we know that the connection has been established. All of that is working. So that means it should also work directly from Git Gadget. So let's try that. I'm going to start up Git Gadget again. Here we go. And I'm going to clone. So I'm going to get paste information in here. It's going directly into the Git directory that I created prior previously when I introduced myself. I'm going to click on clone. Great. It's going to ask me, is it okay to stop the Git gadget and open up the new test one project folder? I'm going to say yes. Okay. So let's see. Here we go. So here's my readme file, uh, the test one project file. So that was all pulled directly from the Git, Git lab server. So let's do the following. Let's see if we can make a change. My third change. from server, right? So just so I know where it's coming from. So again, you can see that our studio is telling me, hey, you haven't saved this yet, so let's save the file. And as soon as I do that, it should be the case that if I go to the Git tab, yep, here it says that readme.md has changed. So there's two ways in which I can get this change onto the GitLab server. Click on commit. Here's the change. I could stage this, provide a commit message, hit commit and push, or I could use Git Gadget, and let me just do that. Git Gadget. Again, there's a number of steps, but you'll get very comfortable with those very soon. So I'm going to sync between what's on my server and is on the GitLab server, so let's see if that works. So the first step is to stage, so any changes that you made are gonna get staged. And it shows me, yep, this is the change that I made, my third change, which is from the server. So let's dismiss this window. Um, my third change, you can call it whatever you like. I'm going to hit commit. Looks like that all went fine. Dismiss the window. And now I'm going to push the change to the GitLab server. Okay. Now I want to double check that the changes that I made, right, this, this new line, my third change, is indeed available on the GitLab server. So let's click the check button. 
And there we go, excellent. My third change from the server has been added to the GitLab server repo, excellent. Okay, so we are all set with that. Now, what happens if I go to test one? I'm just gonna close this little window here. All right, so now I'm back on my local machine, but I don't have that change, right? So there's now three different versions. There's the version that's on my, um, on my serve on the server account, right? That has this. There is the GitLab server that has the information, but test one doesn't have the information yet. So how do I get that? How do I make sure that my version on my laptop is up to date? Well, that's pretty straightforward. I can just click on the Git tab and say pull. So this is going to look to the GitLab server and see if there's any changes there relative to the commits that I have available on my local machine. And if there's any differences, it's gonna pull these differences and update the local version of your files. And there we go. Now I have on my local machine, the latest version. I have on the GitLab, ver GitLab server, the latest version with everything. And on the remote MSBA server uh, where I'm running GitLab, I've got everything.